Hi guys, back with Bassingtons. I hope you're all keeping well and I hope you're all staying safe. We've had a great response to our top 10 watch brands list. However, one or two of you have questioned uh, the positioning of Rolex at number seven. So we thought we would produce a vlog as to the reasons why. Now the list is divided into two main sections. Those brands that are positioned numbers one to five and those brands that are positioned numbers six to 10. The brands that are positioned numbers one to five have an incredibly long history of watchmaking. Some of those brands have been in existence for well over 200 years. They produce complex complications. In addition, they are very low volume manufacturers. For instance, A. Langer and Zone only produces about 5,000 watches per annum. In contrast, Rolex produces about 800,000 watches a year. Rolex is to the watch world what Mercedes-Benz is to the car world. Mercedes-Benz, great iconic brand, great producer of cars, but they are a volume car manufacturer and they do this by standardizing their production. So the floor pans, the engines and the running gears are carried over various product lines. Rolex implement the same strategy. The clasps, the bracelets, the dial markers, the dial hands, the movements are carried across various product ranges. That's how they're able to volume manufacture. And that is how they're able to produce a very, very well-made and reliable product. I actually think Rolex watches are bomb proof. Now this list, if I was producing 10 years ago, I would have had IWC on the list. Not only that, I would have had IWC ahead of Rolex. If it had been 15 to 20 years ago that this list had been produced, I would have had brands like Panerai and Breitling on the list. So that shows you how this list can evolve over a relatively short period of time. And I've kind of given you part of the reason why Rolex is position seven and it's not within the top five watch brands. However, there is another reason. We don't think Rolex has been very innovative in recent years. They have stuck with a tried and tested formula, which has been very, very successful for them. No question about it. But I'll just give you an example of this. I'm going to show you a picture here of the two-tone GMT launched in 2018, commonly known as the Rubia. The following year, 2019, and here's a picture coming up, they launched the two-tone Sea Dweller. Yes, then the following year after that, in 2020, Here's a picture coming up. They launched the two-tone Submariner. I think by now you're catching my drift. Not much change there between three product ranges. They're all very, very similar design. And what we feel needs to occur, Rolex need to be a little bit more innovative, perhaps push the boundary, boundaries out a bit more on the product design, perhaps aim at a younger generation. Now, a brand that I've already mentioned who is doing this is Grand Seiko. 10 years ago, Grand Seiko would have been nowhere near this top 10 list. More importantly, Grand Seiko only became a brand on its own four years ago when it was separated from the mother brand Seiko. And yet it's on the top 10 list. That is an incredible achievement. Why is that? Yes, they make a great product. Yes, it's very reliable. Yes, it's robust, but they're very innovative. The spring drive movement, the snowflake design, Zahatsu polishing, fantastic, absolutely amazing. What will be interesting is to see this list, or I should say for Bassingtons to revisit this list in five to six years time. It will be very interesting to see if Grand Seiko is ahead of Rolex. Stay safe and stay tuned.